It is now time for members' statements. The member from Bruce Gray, Owen Sound. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. In celebration of Naturopathic Medicine Week, I'm pleased to rise today in the House in recognition of naturopathic doctors in my riding of Bruce Gray-Owen Sound and across the province. Naturopathic doctors are on the forefront of health and preventative medicine in communities throughout Ontario. They're opening their doors and conducting free healthy living seminars and providing information and education on the benefits of naturopathic medicine. While this week would normally be cause for celebration of these health professionals, the government's proposed regulations, which will prevent NDs from accessing necessary and essential laboratory tests, will result in the shuffling of patients between NDs offices is dampening the celebration. NDs and their patients in, many, in my community are concerned about their ability to provide continuity of care to their patients and the limitations placed on them to provide the exemplary, safe and effective care NDs have demonstrated over the last 90 years. As Ontarians are aging and chronic disease are becoming more prevalent, we should be striving to make NDs an equal partner in our health care system, helping them to integrate prevention and to provide diagnosis and treatment to patients. Every day, thousands of Ontarians depend on the service services of naturopathic doctors, which are a blend of conventional, traditional and natural medicine to deliver an annualized and collaborative approach to health care. The Ontario Association of Naturopathic Doctors represents the vast majority of licensed naturopathic doctors in Ontario. To connect with an ND near your community, please visit www.oand.org. On behalf of my constituents, I thank these dedicated doctors for all they do to support the health needs of all Ontarians, and we encourage the government to do the same. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Member Stavis, the member of Hamilton East, Stony Creek. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, last Friday I was honoured to attend the opening ceremony for the Veterans Place at Gore Park in Hamilton. It was a fitting that the ceremony was held on the 70th anniversary of Nazi Germany's unconditional surrender, VE Day, the end of World War II in Europe. Veterans Place grew from the desire to recognize Gore Park as a place where military service has been continually commemorated for over 90 years. The cenotaph in Gore Park has been standing since 1923. The new memorial wall is a wonderful series of illuminated glass panels that displays images and the text that illustrates the meaning of military service to our community and country in the past, today and in the future. There are black and white panels of the Royal Hamilton Light Infantry and a 1916 military parade in Gore Park. It provides context about the conflicts and peacekeeping missions that Canada has been involved in since the ten of half went up. The concept, design and photographs were developed by the Veterans Place Focus Group made up of local volunteers, current service men and women and historians working with City Hall staff. I share their hope that Veterans Place in Gore Park will provide the citizens of Hamilton with a space in which to reflect on and remember the past and to hope for the future. This display has a personal meaning for me, Speaker. Five members in my family were veterans of World War II. We were lucky they all returned to live out their lives, two of them in the Air Force and three in the Navy. Thank you. Thank you. Member Stavis, the member from Cambridge. Thank you, Speaker. It gives me pleasure to rise on behalf of my constituents in Cambridge today to recognize the Naturopathic Medicine Week, which is this week, May 11th to the 17th. Across Canada, we, this week, we uh, give acknowledgement and thanks to all the naturopathic doctors who provide us with alternative paths to health. Naturopathic doctors contribute to well-being across the country by helping patients to invest in preventative measures to ensure general good health. For those of us who do not take the time to care for ourselves on a daily basis, House. Yeah. Naturopathic doctors can help us to learn how to stay healthy and to live better lives. The Ontario Association of Naturopathic Doctors is focusing this week on educating the public about chronic pain, fatigue and stress. In fact, they held an event last night here in Toronto stressing the importance of managing stress to improve health. And that's a lesson I think many of us around Queen's Park would do well to heed. Recently, I had the opportunity to tour the Farkasin Naturopathic Clinic in Air and to learn about what naturopathic doctors are doing to contribute to good health. As a member of the community of healthcare providers in Ontario, I was really glad to hear about health promotion through another lens. I'm happy to acknowledge the Ontario Association of Naturopathic Doctors for promoting health across the province. And, Speaker, it's a message I think we would do well to follow. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Member Stevens, member from Chatham, Kent, Essex. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, Speaker, May is Lyme Awareness Month. The best way to protect against Lyme disease is to prevent tick bites. As we approach a long weekend, it's important to be aware of the threat that tick bites pose. We know that ticks breed heavily in moist areas where there is long grass, most notably in our parks, where people go to enjoy nature. 
with their families. Many are walking unknowingly into a potential health hazard. They enjoy the outdoors and especially in our provincial parks and in the riding of Chatham, Ken Essex, we have Rondo and Wheatley Provincial Parks as well as Point Pelee National Park. Spraying ticks is not possible as it will harm ecosystems, but cutting back tall grasses next to walk and bike trails inside our parks will in fact help alleviate this problem. The government and legislatures must do more to protect Ontarians from Lyme disease. And individually, uh, if people can in fact help minimize the risk of tick bites by knowing the areas of the province where ticks are common. You can cover skin and pull socks over pant legs to minimize exposure to ticks and wear light-colored uh, clothing so it's easier to spot them. It's important to shower or bathe within two hours of being outdoors to wash away loose ticks. And finally, do a full-body check for ticks on yourself, children, and pets. Speaker, together, we, you and I, can keep Ontarians healthy and safe. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today we had the very special privilege in a group stop by Queen's Park, and I told them, Ani, Mino Gijigat, Ani Shijayan. A group of First Nations people from Treaty 9, Mushkagawak area are walking from Cochrane to Ottawa to bring awareness to the damage Indian residential schools did to their culture, their family, to individuals, and their way of life. And I had the privilege of hosting them in my office. And if you might have spent a distinct scent on the east doors, we had a smudging in my office, and they, together, we offered a prayer to uh, Minugijigat. This, this group main objective was to educate Canadians of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission to the Treaty 9 group is dedicating the five-day walk to the missing and dead Aboriginal women and will be thinking of them and directing their energy to this issue as they make their way to Ottawa. The Truth and Reconciliation Commission mandates includes finding out the truth about what happened to these schools and then informing Canada. The Commission hopes to guide and encourage First Nations, Inuit and Métis and Canadians in a process of healing. This is led to reconciliation and renewed relationships based on a mutual understanding and respect. Nina Nanu Osapawe Wijak, which means we are all helpers. Walk for Indian residential school survivors for truth and reconciliation. I wish good luck to my friends on your journey. Bamapi, see you later, my new friends. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, I want to formally offer my most sincere apologies for any offence and hurt caused by the language I used in my petition presented last week, Speaker. It was not my intention to use language that would be offensive to anyone. My choice of language did not reflect the inclusive society that we are all hoping to build. Additionally, I want to recognize that BlackBerry has been a key player in developing the Waterloo region into a globally renowned information and technology leader. Our government is proud to work with companies like BlackBerry to spur innovation, attract investment, and create jobs. Again, I want to reiterate my apologies to the House and to anyone who took offense to the contents of my petition. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member statements. The member from Leeds, Grenville. Thanks, Speaker, I rise uh, on what I'm affectionately calling Mallory Town Day at Queen's Park. I'm thrilled to welcome visitors from my riding to see the Mallory Town Glassworks display on the first floor of the West Wing. It's been great over the past several weeks to have this piece of Leeds, Grenville, and some truly significant Canadian history here to make it feel like home. The Mallory Town Glassworks was Canada's first glassworks and began in 1839 when a Mesa Mallory opened the factory in a log structure just outside of Mallory Town. Glass blowers produced a variety of glassware for settlers, including plates, bowls, jars, and bottles. In addition to these household items, artisans also produced some stunning pieces of glass artwork. Seven of those artifacts are included in the Queen's Park display. The factory closed in 1840, and sadly, almost nothing remains of the building today. However, the site and the national significance of its story has been preserved thanks to the tireless work of the Thousand Islands River Heritage Society, many of whom are with us today. Thank you. 
Society members prepared the beautiful information cards that I shared on all the MPP's desks this morning. I want to thank everyone involved for their efforts to keep this invaluable chapter of our local and national history alive. And if you're traveling on Highway 401 through Eastern Ontario this summer, Speaker, or any of the members, I'm personally inviting you to take the Maori Town exit. Come and explore, explore this piece of our past and discover all the beauty that Front of Young Township and the Thousand Islands have to offer. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member Stavis, the member from Ottawa, O'Neill. Merci. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today, I would like to honour a school in Ottawa who recently uh, was a first in terms of secondary schools in Ontario. It is the first time that the, this Catholic school, which is a professional and technical school, this Minto school, is part of the seven and 749 schools that was evaluated by the Fraser Institute, and with 10 out of 10 points, it is first provincially. It is an honor for this school uh, on La Cité campus, and it is also nice for the Francophone community. Since we gained control of our own school boards in 1992, our Francophone students and our Francophone schools have always shown excellence. It is a long way that we have seen since uh, Regulation 17 and 19, which banned French schools in Ontario. Year after year, our Francophone students are above uh, average in a lot of subjects, and our government believes in the Francophonie and shows this through serious investments. This investment in French education has gone up 101% since 2003. It is with pride that I want to recognize uh, this Catholic high school, the professional and technical mental school for its excellency, as well as other Francophone schools in the province for the nice work they did and for being an ally in the transmission of our Franco-Ontarian culture to the next generation. Thank you. Member Statements, the member from Newmarket Aurora. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm honoured to stand in the House today to bring awareness to an organization from my wonderful riding of Newmarket Aurora. This past January, Say My Name Canada began the March to a Million Coast to Coast Kindness Campaign, challenging organizations, schools, families, and individuals across Canada to make one million acts of kindness. Once this goal is achieved with participation from every province, they'll send a certificate of achievement to the United Nations and challenge the world to do another million acts of kindness. The focus of this campaign is to counter the growing problem of bullying in our schools and community by creating a wave of kindness across Canada with the ultimate goal of ending bullying. This campaign has sparked an influx of random acts of kindness across York Region, whether it be a student standing up for a classmate or students volunteering in, uh, in a senior's home. The positive influence of this campaign is overwhelming. I want to welcome David Robinson and Glenn Murray to the chamber today and to thank them for initiating a ca the campaign and that brings awareness to a very serious issue. I also want to thank the, uh, the schools, organizations, families and individuals from York Region who have contributed to achieving 103,788 acts of kindness thus far. Mr. Speaker, I know our government is doing great work on preventing bullying and harassment across the province, but there's always more we can do. Today, I challenge my colleagues to start a March to the a Million Kindness campaign in their communities so we can stop bullying one random act of kindness at a time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.